was posted as required by the Texas Open Meetings Act. Yes, and we do have a quorum tonight. Uh, I want to just say yesterday I had the privilege of attending the uh, – is anybody here from Harlingen High School tonight? Is Imelda here? Right here. Right. Uh, I had the privilege of attending right – there. there she is. I want to congratulate you for uh, – please stand up. Uh, the Harlingen High School every year, as many of our schools do, uh, honor the veterans on Veterans Day. And uh, we went over there yesterday, and it was an unbelievable performance and a dedication and respect for the veterans. And many, many veterans in our community showed up. And uh, I want to thank you so much for that. And you have a, just a terrific ROTC program and, and uh, student body. Thank you. And, the next item is, is our moment of silence, and I'd like everyone tonight to, in the moment of silence, to think about those veterans who made that ultimate sacrifice to give us the liberties that we, we enjoy today. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Next item is uh, a Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Strubhart. Thank you, Mr. President, board members, Dr. Cabasos, administration, and audience. Tonight's pledge will be led by Ava Valadez from Austin Elementary. Ava is a fifth grade student and a very involved one at that. Her willingness to work hard has enabled her to persevere in many areas of her young life. For example, she has exceeded expectations by gaining the coveted nomination to serve as student council president of her class. She was also unanim unanimously chosen by her teachers to receive the Outstanding Student Award for the first quarter. Ava's character also shines through. She was nominated to receive the prestigious Knights of Character Award on her campus. Her teacher writes, Ava Valadez will achieve great things because of her diligence. And it is this diligence that has helped Ava soar to new heights. In addition to the, those honors, Ava is keeping herself busy as a participant in UIL spelling. And she participated at the Harlingen School of Health Professions program for fifth graders. She represented her campus well as she took on special task, task and participated in activities that HSHP had prepared for them. Ava also has a passion for the arts. She has caught the acting bug, and she has taken on a dramatic role in a lively production at her church. So what can't Ava do? There's no limit to this young lady's potential, and we are so excited to see what's in store for her future. As the saying goes, the sky's the limit. Ava is joined this evening by her grandmother, Bertha Arellano. Ladies and gentlemen, Ava Valadez. Thank you, Ava. Quite a number of accomplishments. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda is the National Blue Ribbon School Recognition for Dishman Elementary School. Lori Romero. Good evening, Mr. President, school board members, Dr. Cavazos, senior team, and audience. Uh, tonight we have the pleasure of recognizing one of our campuses, the U.S. Department of Education's National Blue Ribbon Schools Program has honored America's most successful public and non-public elementary, middle, and high schools. Out of 47 states, 349 campuses received this prestigious award this year. 300 public and 49 private. Its logo has become a trademark of excellence, a symbol of quality, recognized by parents to policymakers across thousands of communities. This past Thursday, November the 8th, Dishman Elementary was recognized in Washington, D.C. for their accomplishments. It is with great pleasure 
that we acknowledge Dishman Elementary as Harlingen CISD's first national blue ribbon school. Mr. President and Dr. Cavazos, if you'll please join us. And Ms. Davis, if you'll join us up here as well. If I can have our staff join us up here for a picture, please, a photo right in the front. Mr. President, I'd like to say a few words. Yes, sir, Mr. De Leon. <laughs> I, I, was, I was in a meeting in Mission the other day, and as we started the meeting, 20 minutes of the whole meeting was about Dishman mm -hmm. and about the prestige that they put to, not only to, to Harlingen, but to the whole valley. So the whole time they were talking about, about Dishman and talking about the accomplishments and and the exposure that, that we received, I felt six foot tall. You know, I'm not six feet tall, <laughs> but I felt it. <laughs> but boy, boy, I felt, I felt so good uh, in terms of it's spreading all over the place. I mean, what you've done, Ms. Davis, you and your team, uh, and it's, it's it, the students, it's everyone. What an amazing accomplishment. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you for putting us on the map. Thank you for educating our individuals. And thank you for letting everyone know that education is probably one of the most important things in, in, in a child's life. So great job. Keep up the great work. And we'll be expecting you next year here, too, again. <laughs> no pressure. Mr. President, if I could. Yes. So I, we see you here a lot. It never, it never gets old because you always bring your staff with you and we, you can just, it's palpable the love 
uh, that you have, the, the campus, the, the, just the culture of caring there and the culture of inspiring students. And um, it all stems from great leadership. But great leadership is not about, you know, having the power and having all the knowledge. It's really just about serving your people. And it's clear to us that you serve your people well, you support them, um, and you inspire them to do great things for our little ones in the classroom. And, and uh, it's just, it's, it's amazing to see what you've done there. Um, and uh, we're in just in awe sometimes, but uh, you also have, a, every time you have a great showing of your staff and they come here to support you, um, and that means a lot. So uh, keep up the great work. Um, and the students I know are going to do great things because of your teachers and all your leadership there on the campus. So keep, it's just an amazing culture. So keep up the great work. We're proud of you. Thanks so much. I just want to add that I'm not surprised here. Uh, I think I've had your school twice as, as one of the schools that were designated each year. And every time I go out there, I'm just amazed at your staff. And every time, uh, every board member is assigned to certain schools within the district to the audience. And um, during uh, Board Appreciation Month, the schools will invite you and put on different uh, programs. And I'm just blown away because she has almost every grade put on a program and just showing the skills and talents of her kids. Her staff is all involved. And uh, like Javier said, we'll see you again next year, I hope. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mr. President, Mr. President I, just, I just wanted to add, so um, as, a, as a new board member, I felt very um, honored to be assigned a school and a, a few schools and one of them being Dishman's which was um, a pleasure for me to go out and see this operation ever you know happening and I cannot say how the what I walked away with was that every single person and you took me to every classroom how many students did I meet there was this laser focus on excellence and then we're achieving it but next year we're gonna do better. And this year you're gonna exceed that. It was just incredible. And that's why you got what you got. You all earned it. And thank you so much for leading the way. Congratulations. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Just real quick, I, I know we have a lot of recognitions, but I also wanna extend my congratulations. Everything that uh, my fellow board members have said, we echo everything, but I think Javier, uh, Mr. Leon talked about you know uh, it being a source of pride for the district for 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 Harlingen, but I'm sure you guys know or you know a lot of people from Combs from the town of Combs and that's a very proud community, you know. So you do represent the school district and you represent Harlingen, but for for the town of Combs to to come together and and, and support this school and support everything that you guys do, uh, you know, it, it's definitely I know a lot of people from there, so uh, it's definitely a source of pride and, and congratulations you. you We've all, we're already there. You're just taking us even further with this recognition. So thank you again. Dr. Congrat Menjiz. Congratulations. Clearly, you know, Dr. Pettis mentioned culture. And it's clear that it, you've got some great culture going on, going on over there. You've got your whole, seems like the whole staff here with you, which is awesome. You know, and, and so I invite you next year when you win. <laughs> to bring the kids with you, no right? Pressure. Bring the kids with you. That's part of the culture, right? And uh, congratulations to you. Okay, our next item is the Zavala Elementary School named Apple Distinguished School for 2018 2000, through 2021. Lori Romero and Veronica Cortana. Mr. President, board members, superintendent, senior team, and audience. So it is a great pleasure to be here this evening. And Mrs. Romero, this is two times in one night. Very uh, nice. I say it's a great night for elementary teachers. Yes, <laughs> it is. So this evening is indeed a celebration for Zavala and also for HCISD. So in the summer of 2014, our Zavala principal, Mrs. Garza, and our then instructional technologist, Casey Boykin, received these beautiful white folders with this, per this perfect apple on the front of that cover. So unbeknownst to them, the contents of that folder would really change the trajectory of Zavala Elementary. Why? Because included in that packet was an application to apply for the Connect Ed grant. 
incredible opportunity for Zavala. This enabled us to launch a one-to-one -one program at Zavala, and since then, the campus has excelled and innovation has been realized in every corner of that campus. From the ILC to every classroom, and yes, even the principal's office, instructional technology has allowed the four C's to really come to life at Zavala. Students and faculty alike grew a passion for integration of technology into the curriculum, and programs such as their newscast really put Zavala on the map. This evening, we are here to celebrate yet another milestone for Zavala Elementary as we proudly recognize them as an Apple Distinguished School. In total, there are about 400 Apple Distinguished Schools that collectively represent 29 countries. Of the 400, there are approximately 250 in the United States, and in our state, only 10. So this is a huge accomplishment for Zavala. Mr. Board President, Dr. Calasos, if you would please join us down here, and Mrs. Garza, if you'd come and join us as well. Double recognition, Tanya. <laughs> so if we could have our whole Zavala team come and join us up here. They sure are. Oh, it's an apple. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it was good.
Mr. De Leon, would you have some comments? Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I kind of noticed that there were more Savala faculty and staff than there were Dishman, so I think they get two <laughs> points on that one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Notice he waited until after they left. Yeah. Yeah. After they left, that's right. He's not up for election. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. I wanted to wait till they leave. I, I kind of, I'm excited that actually Savala's my school this year, and I was kind of doing some researching in case any of the Savala team gave me a, a quiz or a test. I, I was ready, but I look forward, and I, Ms. Goddess, I want to see if I can reach out to you sometime uh, this week or next week so I can go over and take a tour. I'm excited. You know, we've heard a lot of great things about what's going on. The, you know, how the kids are, or, are learning not only, a lot of people use a computer, but they don't know how to use the computer. There's a huge difference. And your students know how to use the computer. I would like to go over there. I'd like to get a tour of, of all the great things that they're doing. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. When they said that Savala was one of my schools, I had to give Greg about $5 to pick that school. <laughs> so um, I look forward to, to, to visiting the, the campus, hopefully before the, the Thanksgiving holidays. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much for everything that you do. And I can tell you, by your staff being here, that just shows how dedicated each and every single one of you are. You know, there's a lot of things that you do every day, how hard you work. I mean, it's so intense uh, 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 a daily class is. Um, it's cold outside. It's, 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 it's getting late in the evening. But that didn't deter your staff to be here, to be dedicated, be hardworking, and being here for, for this uh, special night. So thank you for that. Uh, keep up the great work, and I look forward to meeting with, with you and your team very, very soon. Thank you. Mr. President. Dr. Pettis. So I had the pleasure, it was just coincidence, just uh, serendipitous of uh, actually taking a flight. I was going to, text to a board meeting in Houston, and uh, I got to see Tanya and her amazing team on, headed out to, uh, I believe it was Phoenix, to the Connect Ed Conference to uh, receive this award and to uh, celebrate the, all the success of her, of her campus w uh, with her with her leaders there. And uh, so it was kind of exciting, and I saw the excitement in them. Um, but, uh, you know, and I've been to Zavala several times, and I, the same thing applies uh, in addition to the culture. You can tell from the culture, from the leadership, is just their very amazing leadership and amazing, uh, obviously, focus on, on, on student achievement and on, on, on having, uh, obviously, high expectations. One of the things I'm, I'm excited about, though, with this in particular is, you know, we all know that it's not about the computers. It's not about, you know, it, it's about the learning, right? So that's just a tool for the learning, right? And, and the job of teachers is not just to teach the students everything they know. It's to help the students learn everything they can, right? But the thing with this is that it, it makes it a lot easier when you have the resources and when you have the best practices at your disposal because now you're – you're interacting with folks all over the nation. You're interacting with Apple. You're interact I mean, so you're actually getting to sort of see these best practices first, firsthand, um, uh, sharing you know the cl the space with, with the best of the best around the, around the nation. So very awesome opportunity, not only for Zavala, but ov obviously this can spread um, like wildfire across. You know, I shouldn't say that right now with what's happening in California. Sorry. <laughs> Let, apologize let's but, move on oh, but, uh, <laughs> but th but this could spread to all the other campuses in the in, in the district and this, that's what we're really excited about to see what you come what you come back with to really not only help every student in Zavala but all the rest of the 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 district and so really exciting times um, thank you for you know Apple for this general for the generosity but we're really thank you for taking the time to put together the application and for really showing them that you know we do deserve this here in Zavala and HCISD so Kudos to your camp, to you and your campus. We're really excited to, to see what you bring back, and really excited to see you all go to the next steps uh, there at Zavala. So proud of you guys! Congratulations, Mr. President. Yes, just, sir. Mr. just really quick, uh, Dr. Cavazos always talks when when he goes and talks to students, anybody in, in the community about protecting the brand. And not only do we do that here at Hardingen with our students, and you know we got our students of the month here, and 
Uh, everybody does that 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 part to protect the brand. But then you have schools like Dishman and like Savala that that add to that brand. And I just want to thank you all for that because you 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 add so much more to to the brand that is HCISD, and, and we're all very proud of that. So thank you. Thank you. Dr. Cavazos. So so I want to just share a couple of things. I did see the picture of when you were at the airport and Dr. Perez was with you. Uh, I was in Washington, D.C. with the team of Dishman. I said, Dr. Perez, that was real nice of you to take him to the airport. He said, sir, you're not here, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to say to, uh, to Hilario Jaimes's point, uh, Savala, Dishman, here's what's unique, is that you are bringing a community, a sense of community to the area that you represent. And we're forever grateful for that because each community in Harlingen and in Combs deserves a great school. And so, Tanya, and to your whole team that's here in a very, on a very cold night, I want to thank you <coughs> for putting our district on the map, for doing the right thing for kids, and, and keep in mind that it's all about the children. They're waiting for the adults to get it right. You're getting it right. Dishman's getting it right. We're super proud of you. Continue to do the hard work and the heavy lifting. We realize that that's where it takes place at the campuses. We're proud of you. We celebrate with you, and I look forward to visiting your campus as well. So thank you for what you all do, and thank you to Dishman. I know they left because, you know, you had a bigger crowd, is according <laughs> to Mr. De Leon. So anyway, you all have a great evening, and drive safe home. Erase that recording on that That's part. That's right. Of Edit it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, our, our next item is the National Hispanic Recognition Program and National Merit Scholarship Program. Melissa Parker. Or Melissa, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Cavazos, senior team, and audience. This evening, we are recognizing the district's National Hispanic Scholars. The National Hispanic Recognition Program identifies academically outstanding Hispanic Latino high school students each year, the NHRP uh, honors about 5,000 of the highest scoring students from over 250,000 Hispanic Latino juniors who take the PSAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. And 19 of those 5,000 attend HCISD schools. Although the NHRP does not provide a financial reward, being named is an important academic recognition. NHRP is proud to honor outstanding students and makes this information available to colleges and universities that are particularly interested in communicating with academically exceptional Hispanic Latino students. So Mr. President and Dr. Cavazos, would you please come forward to recognize this year's honorees? From Harlingen School of Health Professions, we have Erin Castillo, who's not here tonight. He's at Keynes, his first job. <laughs> wow. Also from Harlingen School of Health Professions, uh, Matthew Garcia. From Harlingen School of Health Professions, Morgan Johnson. From Harlingen High School, Miriam Galvez. Harlingen High School, Bianca Lopez.
from Harlingen High School, Arlette McLean. From Harlingen High School, Lorenzo Molina. And from Harlingen High School, Allison Puente. Representing Harlingen High School South, Francisco Ayala. <laughs> also from South, Juliana Castillo. From South as well, Marisa Davila. From South, Reed Davis. Also from South, Isaac Moreno. <laughs> from South, Christian Posada. From South, Rebecca Rusek. <laughs> From South, Lucero Sauceda. Not here this evening. Also from South, Jared Soto, he's not here. And Eric Velarde, I believe he's not here with us either. Um, and our last uh, honoree from South is uh, John Upel. I invite the rest of the board to come down and take a picture. These are nat National Hispanic Scholars.
I'd like to. Can y'all wait until after we move to the next agenda? I have a feeling we're stuck and you're going to want to say a few words before y'all go. So, also being recognized tonight are the district's commended students in the National Merit Scholarship Program. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships that began in 1955. High school students enter the National Merit Program by taking the preliminary SAT, National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. More than two-thirds, about 34,000 of the approximately 50,000 high scores on the PSAT and MSQT receive letters of commendation and recognition for their outstanding academic pro promise. This year's commended students from Harlingen CISD are from Harlingen High School, Bianca Lopez. <laughs> and from Harlingen High School South, William Bell. At this time, I'd like the parents of these wonderful students to stand to be recognized. Thank you so much for it. First of all, you're looking at our future leaders uh, board. I mean, this is amazing. So, and I'm trying to, I was th sitting here thinking, imagine, and you, I hope y'all are thinking the same thing. Imagine when these kids get, get done, and Dishman and Zavala, how many are going to be sitting in this? We're going to have to get a bigger boardroom. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so, because you guys are really uh, trailblazers leading the way, uh, student success in this district. So, thank you for the, for the great uh, work you're doing, your focus on your studies, but also on your leadership and all your extracurricular activities, because it's really noted. Um, and uh, you know, I, I know um, uh, one of the, one of the students that won the big award. Her, your father's in the post office. Is that right? well? So, so did my father work for the post office. So, uh, uh, and I didn't do so bad. So, I think, <laughs> I, I, and I know you're going to do much better than than I do. So, um, it's just it's really just the sky's the limit for y'all. Anything y'all want to achieve in this world, you have the best teachers here. You have the best resources. And it's just unlimited potential. Don't forget what's happening right here in the Rio Grande Valley. So I know y'all are excited about going off to college and that kind of stuff and getting out of the house, and that's, all, that's awesome. But just don't forget that we need tomorrow's leaders. We need y'all to step forward and step up and to fill, fill in these leadership roles. And who else can do it better than folks that are, grew up here, right? So we're really proud of you. We're going to do great things. Uh, but the Valley's growing so fast. Uh, and Texas is growing so fast, and we need y'all to come back and, and be tomorrow's leaders here. And so we need you to come up here and sit where we're sitting. So uh, we, 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 uh, we really care a lot for you. We're proud of you, and keep up the great work. And you're gonna, you reflect great credit, not only your family, but your school and this city and uh, this great state. So thank you. Keep up the good work. Congratulations.
The next item on the agenda is the recognition of PTSA Students of the Month for November 2018. Brianna Bela Garcia. So good evening, Mr. President, board members, Dr. Dr. Cavazos, administration, and audience. I'm delighted to be here this evening to help recognize our November 2018 Harlingen City <coughs> Council PTSA Students of the Month. These students proudly represent Harlingen High School, Harlingen High School South, Early College High School, and Harlingen School of Health Professions. This video is once again produced by our wonderful Media Arts and Communications Academy students, and we hope you enjoy. Conway, I'm in the 12th grade and I go to Harlingen High School. I'm involved in Varsity Cheer, PTSA, NHS, and Rotary Interact. I am most passionate about school because I would like to attend Texas A&M University College of Health Science to pursue my dream in nursing. My name's Tegan Dickey. I'm in the 12th grade and I attend Harlingen High School. I'm the captain of the varsity volleyball and basketball team. I'm in NHS and PTSA. I'm most passionate about becoming a role model for younger athletes. I decided that I wanted to become a physical therapist because being an athlete, many injuries happen and I'm interested on how to prevent them and how to help people get better. I plan on attending Texas State and studying kinesiology. My name is Matthew Cavazos. I'm a senior here at Harlington South. I currently play tennis on the varsity tennis team and I'm involved with Boy Scouts, I'm in Troop 1701. I have earned my rank of Eagle Scout, and I'm also involved in PTSA, and I am actually president of PTSA. I want to become a broadcaster. That is my goal, that is my, that is my goal, that is my dream in life, and my passion is sports. I really became interested in the broadcasting field. I love to talk, I love the communication, I love to spread my opinion, and I really got passionate about sports way back 10 years ago in one of the greatest games I've ever seen. I'm down to two options, either the University of Texas or Texas Tech, and I plan on majoring in broadcast journalism. Hi, I'm Isabella Connell, and I am a senior at Harlington High School South. Well, I've been involved my four years here with Harlingen High School South Speech Drama Debate Team, and last year we actually made it all the way to state and we were state champions. I am a two-time TFA state finalist, and I finaled at the University of Texas Longhorn Classic. And now I'm also involved in working with the Lee Means Fine Arts Academy. I'm really passionate about family law. I plan to go to college and major in communications, hopefully with a master, and then minor in political science probably, and hopefully go to law school and become a family law attorney. I plan on going to either Texas State University or the University of Texas at Austin and majoring in communication studies with a minor in political science. My name is Taylor Ann Garcia. I'm a senior in 12th grade and I go to early college high school. I am the Drama Club Vice President, Senior Class Vice President, and am in Student Council. I'm very passionate about math and I dream to become a mathematics professor. I am passionate about mathematics because my father has had a passion for math and no matter where you go, math is always the same. The numbers never change and you just have a wide span that you could work with. I plan to go to UT Austin and study in the College of Science Mathematics. My name is Seth Adrian Garza. I'm a senior at Early College High School. Well, the activities here that I'm involved in would be student council, yearbook, and um, NHS. And for my extracurriculars, I'm also in diving. I am also quite active in all my um, clubs and sports. 
I'm passionate about many things, but one of my biggest dreams is to become an app product design engineer, and I am dedicating most of my studies into achieving that goal. I do have quite a few hobbies. My hobbies include music. I like to create music, write music. I play the piano and the guitar. I do digital art and photography and digital editing. And um, also gymnastics would be power tumbling as well. Since I'm already in UTRGB and finishing up two years, I want to continue on with UTRGB, save some money, and also um, study in mechanical engineering. My name is Adriana de la Garza, and I am a senior and I go to Hardinger School of Health Professions. I am part of Spanish Club, HOSA, and then a branch of HOSA that is CMA and PTSA. CMA is, is basically promoting healthy lifestyles and basically we just do community service and do like health fairs and etc. I am passionate about volunteering outside in the, in the community and helping out other people and being involved. I want to go to UTRGV and study nursing. My name is Olivia. I'm a senior at HSHP. I am in HOSA, Spanish Club, and Red Cross, and I am treasurer for PTSA. For HSHP, our Spanish Club participates in a lot of the cultural activities like Dia de los Muertos, um, and Mexico Independence Day, and other things. I'm most passionate about um, healthcare, so I want to be a nurse and help out other people. I have two options, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and UTRGB. I'm looking forward to go to Corpus Christi and to major in nursing. Let me just say, Dr. Cavazos, I enjoyed the look you had on your face watching Matthew. So if there are any parents in the audience, can you also stand and be recognized? <laughs> video will be online tomorrow on our YouTube page. Um, so at this time, um, I'd like to invite Edith Serna where is she? From the Harlingen City Council, student of the, she's the student of the month chair. She's going to be here to hand out certificates if Dr. Cavazos and Mr. Powers could come forward. And for the, and for the audience, Dr. Cavazos does not have any vote at Harlingen High School South. Uh, we, believe, <laughs> we, we, be, we believe in site-based leadership, so. Uh, this was 100% deserved by Matthew. Yes. <laughs> All right, so from Harlingen High School, we have Brinkley Conway. Tegan could not be with us tonight because she is at her basketball game. So from Harlingen High School South, Matthew Cavazos could not be with us tonight because he is at the Camp Perry ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> so we have Isabella Connell. From Early College High School, we have Taylor Ann Garcia. We have Seth Garza. From Harlingen School of Health Professions, we have Olivia Lopez. <laughs> and 
And we have Adriana De La Garza. I'd like to invite the board up for a group photo with the student. I got one question. <laughs> what was the game 10 years ago that made him want to go into broadcasting? I, I'm going to ask him when I get home. Yeah, <laughs> I, hope <it> was <laughs> so. a, I hope it was the Longhorns beat USC. I'm sure it was the Longhorns game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next item is the approval of minutes. And the first set of minutes we need to approve are the October 9, 2018 public hearing. Do I have a motion? Does the President make a motion for approval of the October 9th public hearing? Second motion. Moved by Mr. De Leon, seconded by Dr. Muniz. Any corrections to the minutes? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The next item is the October 9th, 2018 regular board meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the October 9th, 2018 regular board meeting minutes. All right. Moved by Mr. Hymas. Do I have a second? Second. By Dr. Reiniger. <coughs> Any corrections to the minutes? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Minutes are approved. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the consent calendar. Mr. President, I make a motion for approval of the consent calendar agenda as, repre as presented. Second. It's moved by Mr. DeLeon, seconded by Dr. Muniz. <coughs> All right. Uh, any other questions or items? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The <coughs> consent agenda is approved unanimously. The next item is the principal report. Magda Gonzalez with Austin Elementary. Okay, I got some of my staff here. That's awesome. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. President, Dr. Cavazos, board members, administration, and audience. At Austin Elementary, we are on track in preparing our students in college and career readiness as we work with students in the lower grades to be inspired to be lifelong learners. Our goal is to prepare all our students for what lies ahead, what their future will hold beyond the elementary years. At Austin Elementary, we're committed to developing the whole child. One area that goes hand in hand with developing the whole child is a learner profile characteristics developed at an international baccalaureate campus. Being named an IB candidacy school has been a great honor. In looking at our campus scorecard, one of the ways we are anticipating growth in the early childhood and college career readiness is through the use 
of the Yes Our Kids Can program. After completing a 12-week pilot program last year, and I can mention we were the only campus in the Rio Grande Valley, we have already seen an increase in student self-confidence, building of character, car career awareness, and parental involvement. Tonight, I have the pleasure of providing you an insight into the Yes Our Kids Can program, along with the impact it has left already on my students. The Yes Our Kids Can was established, the program was established in 2016 as a nonprofit to operate as a social enterprise. Its primary goal is to help every parent and every teacher create an expectation of success and prosperity in the mind of every disadvantaged child in a way that is measurable, scalable, and affordable. So then you may ask, well, where did this program come from? The birth of the idea of the Yes Our Kids can program are, as you see, the founders, Mr. Lionel Sosa and Kathy Sosa. I can mention I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Mr. Sosa last year. He is a retiree who is determined to leave his legacy and leave his imprint with this program. While a fellow at the Institute of Politics at Harvard University, Mr. Sosa was asked to lead a one semester study to uncover the question, why are some Latinos who come from very poor families succeeding at Harvard while many of their siblings, friends, and relatives are not? And the answer that he found as he did his study, in every case, 18 families, someone had intervened in the child's life and planted a foreign thought and thus a new expectation, you are going to college. All the Harvard students credited either a teacher or a parent with setting that expectation, one that became real in their minds and real in their life. And how does Mr. Sosa believe that you can solve this problem? Make every teacher that intervene intervener, the one who changes expectations. Give him or her the tools to making intervening easy. Another way to solve that is to give the teacher, not to give the teacher just one more thing to do, but rather make the offering so effective that it gives them three or four fewer things to do. And one of the major components of the Yes Our Kids Can program is to engage the parent frequently. So then you may ask, well, how did this program come to be at Austin Elementary? Mr. Sosa, who at one point was the founder of the largest Hispanic ad agency in the country, and Ambassador Tishner came together to offer this program to our first grade team. The program was funded for our campus along with 33 iPads for full implementation by Ambassador Tishner. After that, a soft launch was implemented from January through May of 2018 at Austin Elementary. And thus far, in the first year of implementation, 100 students were reached in Texas, and that was in the San Antonio area. The second year, including our school, 600 students were reached. And then this current year, in the 2018-19 school year, over 10,000 students will be reached. Several of the topics that were covered in this 12-week program were the introduction to colleges, super skills, careers, learning is fun, learning matters, and I see something special in you. Other program elements included having the program 15 minutes per day of teacher-led instruction in class, 10 minutes for pre-K in kinder this current year, having fun, culturally relevant songs, videos, activities, and games, which happens to be the best part for the students, messages that cultivate a growth mindset and build a character, messages that reach parents three times a week via smartphones, and on-demand video training portal for the teachers. And so now, my favorite part of the presentation, now you get to see in action what impact this program has left on my students and staff. Okay, so Yes Our Kids Can program, it's pretty much a program that 
sees into the future of the kids to college awareness. So our students are um, instructed in a curriculum that pretty much um, gives them awareness for college through games, puzzles. It is a very small program. It's a small part of the day, but it can be a very effective part of the day. It focuses on getting kids to be uh, encouraged to attend college, that it is possible for them. Whether it's college, whether it's a junior college, uh, it encourages them to seek their careers and the different types of careers that are available for them once they graduate from high school. In my first grade, when I was playing Yes Our Kids Can, my, my teacher told me about a career, that there's different careers. You could be a doctor, you could be a fighter fighter, you could be a police, you could be a farmer, you could, could be a computer tech, you can be a vet, and everything whatever you plan on. I want to be a doctor to help other people to be uh, healthy. I want to be a police officer because um, police officers catch bad guys to help others and they help you find your parents or moms. I want to be a bigger because I do like cooking. I was, go I was cooking eggs when I was little. When I wanted to eat, I was actually cooking eggs. I just didn't put them in the oven. As a parent of a child that is in kindergarten, um, with this program of Yes or Kids Can, um, I mean, it's amazing the impact that it has in their attitude and how they see themselves in the future, that they, that they can do it. You know, it's not like, well, maybe so, or no, that attitude and just that grit that they will get there. It amazes me as a parent to see that change in the attitude of my own child. I mean, he's just five years old, but that attitude change in their self-esteem, I mean, it just impresses me so much. My favorite thing was, like, I love to learn and I love those songs and I love the games. My favorite thing of class is to learn about things that could help us learn a lot so we can earn the degree and go to college. My favorite part was everything. I actually really like it. It was fun and it's a whole bunch of learning. It's like GT, but it's more games, things fun than learning. Last year we were able to pilot it only for our first graders who are now second graders. But this year, we've added on now pre-K, so we've gotten pre-K, kinder, um, and first grade as well. But my vision would be to see that going on to second and third and possibly fourth and fifth. I truly believe, as the founder of the program believes, that the earlier you catch them and believing that they are can be successful, the, the more success you would have. Why to join us? Because it teaches you stuff. It teaches of like what do you what do you want to go to college? Like what kind of college? What kind of career do you want to have? How to behave? All those things teach you stuff. And yes, our kids can. Well, I just want to thank you know the developers of the program. I mean, just to think about the future of the students is just. I mean, I'm thankful for that. Even as a parent, as a teacher, um, as a professional, it's it. It makes me happy to see that others care for that in our kids since they're our future. And now you can see why that was my favorite part. Uh, this program this year will reach thousands of disadvantaged and minority families and will help them create a planned future instead of a future by default. The Yes Our Kids Can program will be reaching all HCISD students in pre-K, kinder, and first grade, hoping to create a planned future and a growth mindset that yes, our kids can have a successful career. And I do want to thank uh, my first grade team they are the ones who openly accepted this program and did a great job. In fact, they, uh, the Yes Our Kids Can team uh, resorted to asking them for recommendations and had made some recommendations for the program last year. And so I want to give them a big round of applause. This is Mrs. Padron, <laughs> Ms. Lefevre, 
and Ms. Garza. I also have one of my kinder teachers, Elvia Gonzalez, please stand. Who happens to be the mom of Gabriel Gonzalez. And he is now our star representative for this program from my campus. And so if you have any questions or comments, Gabriel is ready. For you. Mr. Gabriel President. is ready to answer. Ma Magda, Mr. President, Mag this is Mag the superintendent's seat. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Magda, Magda, yes. I just want to tell you, Mr. DeLeon wants to withdraw everything he said about Zavala. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President. I just <laughs> just really quick, Ms. Gonzalez, thank you so much for that presentation. Yes. That video was great. Gabriel, can you come up here real quick? Yeah, for thank sure. Hey, Gabriel. Up here. Awesome. <laughs> you did a good job, buddy. <laughs> well, he doesn't want a handshake. He wants a candy. Well, I was going to get a candy. Oh. <laughs> you like this view? This is what one day you're going to come and you're going to sit over here. Hey, let's take a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> When are you going to run this school district? <laughs> and because you are, I'm going to give you this pin right here. Uh -huh. oh. So you can wear it anytime you go anywhere for school. You're representing <laughs> your school, Austin Elementary, and then whatever middle school, high school you go to. And uh, you, you, you represent you the board, too. And you represent <laughs> us. <laughs> and you show them that you can, right? Yes, here. Hey, no. oh. Bobby, Bobby has better candies than I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> can, he, can he eat? Can he eat candy? Does he like him and him? Can he eat a chocolate at almost 8 p.m.? <laughs> All right, All right give him a roll. Yeah, after the first oh, oh, give everybody here a high five. You said you wanted to be superintendent. Just slow down, son. Don't. Here, come here. Come here. Oh, Jesus. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Now you're allowed. Now you're allowed to take a picture. Oh, yeah. Anna, don't get it. Here, you can hit it real softly. There you go. <laughs> All right, can we go? I guess we're done. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Say hi to the lady over there too. <laughs> hi to all of us. Hi. We need to get a picture of Gabriel. Come on. Yep. Yeah, yep. we do. Come on. Do you want to do it here? Or? Yeah, let's do it down here. Let's do it out. Let's let's do it. Let me get that. Bring it. Let's bring it there. Get your team up here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody get in. Have a great presentation. Mike, I had a, a fantastic um, presentation, great representation. I know, right? <laughs> from from staff and great representation from from the students. Uh, I can tell you, you're probably going to be class president pretty soon. Um, yeah. I, I, I did have a question. I like I like what Sosa Sosa said, and and I hope I keep it in the context. Don't give teachers more responsibilities, mm -hmm. but give them two, three less. Mm -hmm. And and you, you showed me. You know, I, I, how did he, what was one of the things that, that he said 
how that could happen. And I don't know if you said that in one of the very last slides before the presentation. Was that the answer or? Well, no, one of the things would be is like the teachers here, they use them as class management. So the kids enjoy the program so much that if they don't do a good job during the day, uh, they don't get to do the program. So towards the end of the year, it even gets more difficult. So they were uh, using it as a class management. It was also even for attendance, getting the kids to come and they wouldn't do it till like Friday. And so they usually would do it every day. Um, I just had Ms. Padron mention that she had accidentally forgot to do it this past Friday, and so the kids were reminding her, oh, you need to do that. Oh, that's right. Uh, well, I, that was on purpose, she said, and so we'll do it on Monday. Yeah. So they reminded her on Monday. So I think it, it can help in the class management. Um, teachers, is there anything else that you can think of that they'll use? Yeah, be, you want to come to the front because it's mm -hmm. being recorded so that everybody can oh. hear you. <laughs> it's like 15 minutes it really is like 15 minutes a day it could e even be like 10 minutes a day but a lot of it is uh the character it builds character and that's what we're you know we're going Trying towards to being an ib school it it goes together a lot of the mindset is in there which we're teaching them every day mindset and character building and that's like a good tool for us to use mm -hmm. so. awesome great job awesome thank great you job. <coughs> dr pettis I'm sorry, Bobby, excuse me, Dr. Benitez. Uh, <coughs> great, excellent, uh, probably the best video and presentation I've seen, and we do this monthly. Uh, and of course, Gabriel stole the show. Exactly. <laughs> uh, great video, great content, and, and to the point. So excellent job, C congratulations. Thank you. Dr. Pettis. Uh, so, Marga, I just wanna say how proud I am of, of what you're doing there. Um, Thank you. And I wanna, echo the comments, the phenomenal video, so kudos to, uh, I know Shane and Brown and your, your team did for doing, I mean, what an incredible video, very touching, I hope I hope that video goes viral, it will go viral, I know, um, largely because of Gabriel, but anyway, that's okay, <laughs> uh, the, the, you know, the, the phenomenal, it was a phenomenal video, really touching, and what, what's, what really to me is, um, you know, when I first got on the school board, um, when I first got on the school board, you know, one of the things I was really passionate about, that's why I got involved with education, was how profoundly I was impacted by mentors in my life. And even though I had you know, parents that were, you know, my mom was a teacher, she became an uh, administrator, principal, and these things. So it's not like I didn't have you know, the inspiration of my own home, I did, right? Um, and again, there's so many that don't, right? We'll talk about that in a minute. But, <laughs> but everybody you know, can benefit from you know, a teacher or somebody just really caring and, and, and making an attempt to flip that switch in these kids to get them excited about their own potential. Because a lot of times, all it takes is caring and, and then believing in them. And then they want to please. They'll come every day and they'll say, look what I did, look what, I mean, it's just amazing, right? And then you, you, just, you just fill that, you fill that, that engine with, with, with fuel and drive and just get out of the way because they're going to do amazing things. But a lot of, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be a doctor if it were not for a high school teacher. I mean, it wasn't even, I mean, it could happen at any, at any age, but it was a high school teacher that put that thought in my, in my mind, right? Um, but when I got on the board, you know, and I've been saying this, beating like, like a drum ever since, in my ninth year on the board now, that, you know, listen, it, 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 you know, the curriculum's important. I'm not saying the curriculum and the pedagogy is not important. It is, but really that's secondary, right? Really, what it what it what it, what really it takes to 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 really uh, fuel success in, in children is is really just that that caring, that empathy, and that inspiring them, yeah. right? And that's what happens. It, it magic happens in the classrooms, and that's why it's so important that you're doing that. You mm -hmm. know what you're doing with this program because that's what it's about, right? Mm -hmm. It's just it, it's really telling. And I love that you're involving parents. Mm -hmm. Oh my yes. God, I mean, you know, I had supportive parents and not everybody has, or maybe they have just one. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're so busy working, they're so tired and they just, they don't know how to connect with her. So you're giving them tools and you're giving them inspiration to be able to have those discussions at home mm -hmm. and to be able to see the impact of, of what an education, what kind of opportunities can provide, you know, for, for their children. And so um, I remember one quick story, and then I'll shut up. But uh, you know, there's this, there's a friend of mine who is just an amazing pediatric surgeon. This guy's amazing, and you know, he didn't even have supportive. You know, I mean, in terms of he had supportive parents, but he didn't have educated parents. 
but I don't know where, and you know, and I still haven't figured out where his parents got this, you know, sort of epiphany. But his his parents would just, and they were the poorest, and they could barely afford, you know, you know, you see, you know, the family types. They can barely afford clothes and everything else. But his parents would talk to him every day when he got home. Tell me about school, me he'll Tell me, and and just have conversations. And 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 when he when they when he did great things, he was, they would make it about the uh, the work, right? <laughs> Look what you can do when you work hard, and you oh my God, I'm so proud of you. You're amazing. And they would just talk about these things, you know, and and they were working hourly jobs, just grinding, 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 but talking to their children, to, to talking to the children every day about the opportunities that are out there if they just go out and get them and work mm -hmm. hard, right? And and just, you can do anything you want, Mijo, whatever you want. And the kid, I mean, of course, he went to, you know, you could imagine, he, he went to, I think he went to, uh, well, he went to Michigan Medical School, but I forget, one of the high Ivy League schools, and then Michigan, I mean, just the most amazing places because he, that was being instilled in him at a very young age mm -hmm. from parents, that I think that somehow there were teachers that got them, you know, put it in their brains, just talk to him every day about these things and the rest is, and that's what happened, right? So if we can do this at the school level and engage the parents and tell them that it doesn't take, like three little bullet, put them on your fridge, a little bullet point things that you can do and talk to your kid every day about these things and and they're gonna do amazing things, mm -hmm. you know? And so resources are nice, but really it's what goes on in here and the belief in here that matters most. And so thank you for doing that mm -hmm. for, for, our, for your teachers, for the young ones, and uh, we're super proud uh, of, of the culture you're creating at your campus as yeah. well. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to add that, uh, you know, being on the board, one of the most rewarding uh, items for me of being a board member is graduation each year, watching these, the enthusiasm and the happiness of these kids as they walk across the stage and get their diplomas. And that program tonight was right there with it. <laughs> it was one of the most inspiring, and like Bobby said, the best videos I've, I've ever seen here, and what you're doing over at that campus is phenomenal. I want to thank, you know, Ambassador Warren Tishner, too. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a student there, he and his brother, and his sister and they've been very very good to yes. austin elementary and it's just remarkable but shane i think you've got a new poster child for the uh <laughs> That's right. so, yeah. so <laughs> gabriel okay this isn't the end of it okay this is just the beginning <laughs> fast track to thank you so much right. thank, thank you, you. Okay. what a wonderful program <laughs> like this, like, like, like this, Gabriel. Like, like there you yeah. go. Yeah. See, see, <laughs> We're part of the yes, you can. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Magda. Excellent. The next item is is public comments. Uh, Sonia, do we have any? No. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, item number seven is matters relating to transformation and school support. Uh, transforming Teaching and Learning Committee report, Dr. Alicia no Noyola. Thank you, Mr. President, Dr. Gavasso, senior team, board members, and audience. Uh, l earlier last week, we had our Transforming Teaching and Learning Committee meeting. At that meeting, we had two topics that were brought forward. The first one uh, was titled Two Languages, One Journey, the Middle School Years. I, along with Rosie Covarrubias, uh, Director of Multilanguage Elementary, presented on our dual language program. We shared with you a little bit of our current programming that exists at five of our elementary campuses. Uh, this is a journey that began back in 2012-2013. Uh, you know, six years later, we have a number of students. We actually have about 150 students or so that are in fifth grade that have completed the dual language program. And so as we have reflected on that journey, um, there was a lot of questions about what next. And, and our students asking, we've enjoyed this process, we've enjoyed the experience, can this move on forward? And, and so as we have evaluated the program, uh, we definitely are finding a need to continue that journey. As such, at the, at the Transforming Teaching and Learning, we shared with um, members that were present uh, what that, what our research is showing the, in terms of what we've seen as we've observed other dual language academies at the middle school level. Uh, we shared a little bit about what the design was going to look like. Uh, in, the, in, the next, in the near future, we're going to go ahead and identify a potential middle school campus where we can house this program. We'll look at a number of considerations, um, obviously with regard to where would be the best fit, looking at uh, the size of the program and so forth. So we're excited at, at what this next evolution of the dual language journey will look like, and so we'll certainly keep you posted on that. 
Uh, the second presentation was done by Luis Solorio, our Assistant Director of Athletics and Wellness. Uh, Mr. Solorio shared a little bit about uh, what that department is doing in relation to addressing some of our strategic plan specific results um, with regard to expanding opportunities for children in terms of enrichment and after school programming. But he also highlighted their, the goal of the athletic department which is to uh, enhance and, and increase the number of students that are, that are participating in athletics. So as such, uh, in his presentation, he shared some of the opportunities that they are looking to implement, uh, beginning with the development or creation of a sixth grade baseball softball program uh, that will begin implementation through the ACE grant that we have received. He also talked about creating opportunities for students to increase their skills in golf, and that they're going to be creating some stations that will become available to elementary, middle, and high school students uh, to learn the game of golf and or to enhance their skills in that uh, program. They also talked about two programs that they are looking to, to uh, research as possibility for our high schools, and that is in the area of water polo, water polo and powerlifting. Uh, through his presentation, he explained some of the components of each program, what a rollout would look like, uh, as well as a general timeline for implementation. Um, they're certainly looking to uh, the possibility of opening some of those programs this year as well as uh, implementation for next year. So uh, really excited at, at connecting students to school through a number of these programs and enhancing the opportunities for students to always be connected to our school programming. Uh, Dr. Bettis chairs the Transforming Teaching and Learning Committee. So Dr. Bettis, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you if you have something to share with regard to, to our meeting. Well, j just again how impressed I am with, uh, you know, the, the wheels never stop in, in all the design committees you have in terms of uh, us, you know, um, really, you know, um, having fidelity to the strategic plan. And so I'm just very impressed with, uh, with the work that's ongoing. Really excited uh, about the dual uh, language. Um, you know, uh, schools, uh, you know, not stopping at elementary, but then continuing on. I can't imagine uh, the amount of opportunities that are going to be available to those students that go on into medical school and then, of course, into high school. Um, and um, I mean, just home run in terms of opportunities for these for these students. And so, um, I think more and more people are going to figure this out. So we'll have to be ready down the road for that expansion. But for right now, I think you all are doing it, uh, just an incredible job. Um, I did, um, uh, the board did know, note um, how you all so eloquently you know, presented the, the, the topic, but also in that, the problem of the human capital um, in terms of really finding the, the best of the best teachers to really, because it's a very unique uh, space that you, know, you can't just put anybody there. You know, and so um, we'll, we'll be sort of uh, curious to see how we can kind of get the word out there um, because I, I do think that a lot of other teachers in other districts uh, um, you know in this region and other regions will, will want to come to Harlingen mm -hmm. specifically for these for, for these cutting edge programs that we and you know we do have uh, thanks to Dr. Cavazos and you Dr. Noel and our, our incredible uh, executive <coughs> team we do have a phenomenal track record of responsibly rolling out these innovative initiatives and innovative so I think we'll be able to get some top-notch folks if we just get the word out and find the ways to get the word out there that we're looking for the best of the best and so we're really excited to see where, where that goes uh, in terms of the second topic in our, our you know our sport athletics and, and, and sports um, you know we take great pride in Harlingen that uh, we're all about the holistic development of our students right and we take great pride that you know in our athletics and our arts and of course in our academics um, and I, I do feel that this is a great opportunity with, you mentioned the expansion of softball and introduction of golf and <coughs> water polo and, and, you know, possible other opportunities. We'll see what's, we're, we'll see what the final verdict and outcome comes after your due diligence there. Uh, but, but I, I do feel that this is going to be an, another great, great, uh, opportunity for the district to sort of bring in even more phenomenal students to the district. Right. Uh, and not only that, but increase the involvement and the participation of the students we do have um, because we do know that this kind of engagement is going to actually allow them to excel in the classrooms and so uh, f and, and excel in life after 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 they graduate so uh, great work really excited about what's going on in the athletics department thanks to you know, Randy Creators and Luis uh, uh, Solio for their great leadership there and uh, and again thank you Dr. Cavazos for continuing to bring 
um, important um, topics to this committee. Um, sometimes in very early stages, we thank you for your trust there, and and we really are appreciative of the opportunity uh, to you know get in in, in the dialogue and uh, with you guys. So thank you. So, uh, Dr. Perez, uh, I think you challenged our team of eight training to be a water polo match, right? Yeah. So is that what you said? That is so correct. I have been practicing, so I hope you are too. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So. Can we get can we get the ambulance there? Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the real one from the beginning. <laughs> the real one. The real one. Because <laughs> we'll need that. All right, the, ne the next item eight is matters related to business services, and that is <coughs> consideration and approval to award a construction services contract for the 2018 Harlingen School of Health Professions walk-in cooler and freezer bed. Julio Cavazos. Thank you, Mr. Powers, Dr. Cavazos, board members. Agenda item 8A is consideration and approval of award for walk-in cooler and freezer for the School of Health Professions. Ranking committee met and ranked the mm -hmm. two proposals we received the committee is recommending the top rank offer of central air and heat at a cost of $123,000. Uh, this is below our budget. Uh, we did discuss this at our facility committee meeting last week. I'd be glad to answer any questions the board might have. Mr. President, move approval uh, to award the uh, construction services contract on the walk-in cool and freezer bid as presented. Second. Second. Moved by Dr. Pettis and seconded by Eladio Hymas. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The next is uh, number nine is matters relating to human services, approval of revisions to policy update 111 and policies DEC local and EIC local on second reading. Dr. Noyola. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, tonight we bring for your approval uh, revisions on second reading to policy update 111. These revisions are as a direct result of uh, changes that came about as part of the 85th legislative session. In addition, we brought forward two local policies, policy EIC local and policy DEC local. These were minor revisions designed really to bring clarity to our local processes. As such, administration recommends approval of these revisions. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion for approval of the revisions to policy update 111 and policies uh, DEC local and EIC local on second reading. Second. Second by, uh, moved by Dr. Muniz and second by Dr. Reiniger. Is there any further discussion on this item? If there's not, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries unanimously. Item number 10 is matters relating to district operations. The facility committee report by Mr. Tapia. Thank you, Board President Powers, members of the board, Dr. Cavazos. On November 6th, we held our monthly uh, facilities committee meeting. Uh, the first item, we pre I presented a report on the 2017-18 school year electrical energy consumption report for all our schools and support service buildings. Uh, overall, we saw about a 4% uh, decrease in kilowatt hours usage and about a 16% uh, cost savings for the year. Uh, we also went over the district's TRE program, the Treasure Hills Elementary Classroom Wing, and gave, gave an update. The weather finally cleared. We were able to finish the pouring of all the 185 drilled piers uh, for, for the for the subgrade work. So now they're, they're starting to do all the uh, rough end plumbing work and storm sewer drink, uh, work and everything that goes underground. Uh, so we're hoping the, the break in the weather lasts so they can continue uh, and, and try to make up some time. Um, we also had the elementary multi-purpose wall panel upgrades. We're complete with those uh, four schools, uh, working on the punch list there. The security fencing work for the Harlingen High School South and Cano. I presented a timeline of when they, when are they going to start. They should have started l uh, late last week. So at the next meeting, I'll give a progress report uh, showing the, the work done. The uh, freezer cooler for the health School of Health Professions, so we just awarded that right now. Uh, we also had a report on the HCISD Canal baseball fields. Those are the ones by Cano Elementary that we bought. And we're doing that project in-house with TRE uh, monies. Our maintenance department's fixing up both boys and girls baseball fields redoing the the grass the infield sprinkler systems they're going to install bleachers the fixing up the restroom and, and the parking lot and things like that getting it ready for that uh, athletic program we're going to have there later in the year uh, we also had a report on dixie and key softball field improvements uh, we're pouring slabs on the outfield to add additional bleachers so that we can have more seating capacity for spec spectators during large games so the slabs are poured, so now we're just waiting for the, uh, I think it's Sturdy Steel Company to come in and 
move the bleachers over there and get them get them ready for use. And then we had an elementary playground uh, equipment improvements project that was approved under consent agenda for some up upgrade um, for some of the fun fitness uh, PE uh, uh, equipment installation at the elementary schools and two of the playgrounds at two of the schools that needed uh, replacing some old units there. And then we had a construction funds and report from Julio Cavazos on, on several projects. And that's pretty much it. I'll turn it over to Mr. Powers, our, our chair, uh, well, or, or Mr. Hymas. Yeah, well, I wasn't here, so I'll just wait. Okay. Um, I just want to comment on the electrical energy consumption report. This was uh, several, a couple years ago, I guess, we had made an investment to go into this project uh, with the idea that it was going to be a, a cost savings to the district, and it has proven to, to, be, deep, to be just that. Uh, Julio, uh, how much did we had some estimates the other day of our savings in, in terms of dollars? Uh, about $300,000 in actual savings over the course of a, a year and a half. That's fantastic, and it's going to get better. So everything we've done, and Oscar, you and Joel Cruz, y'all have done a great job in that regard. Super. Uh, Treasure Hills is, you know, the contractor I know has been hampered by some bad weather. We've had more rain this year than I think we've had in the last five. But uh, the progress is coming along well. I mean, I've driven by a few times, and, and they're really knocking it out. Uh, so I know they're trying to make up the work. And I'm just real excited about the uh, the uh, softball fields, the program that we're getting into over there by Kano. And I think it's going to be a real super uh, – success for our district once we get that implemented it'll also be used by our wellness program we have softball teams with our staff so they'll be using those fields as well and again i just want to you know i want to thank the public from the from the for the the board wants to thank the public for the tre because a lot of these upgrades and everything to make this district first class is due to that and we appreciate everything that they did in supporting that project thank you all okay the next item on the agenda is Adjournment to close or executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071, 551.072, 551.074, and 551.082 of the Open Meetings Act for the following purposes. A. A consultation with legal counsel concerning pending litigation, including Manor Style Travelers Casualty and Surety Company of America versus HCISD et al. And uh, the next item is the employment of teachers and other professional staff. And I think that was it. That's it. I assume, Elizabeth, you want me to read the whole style or just at all good enough? You're good. All right. Pending litigation. All right. At this time, we are adjourned into closed session. It is to consider and take possible action regarding possible settlement EEOC complaint charge number 451-2018-03539. Do I have a motion? Mr. President, I make a motion. I move that the board approve the settlement of EEOC complaint charge number 451-2018-03539 as discussed in executive session. Second the motion. Moved by Mr. De Leon, seconded by Dr. Mugis. Is there any further discussion on this matter? If there is none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries unanimously. The next item is to consider and take possible action regarding Travelers Casualty and Surety Company of America versus HCISD, cause number C16, CV0411 in the U.S. District Court, Southern District of Texas, McAllen Division. Mr. President, we're requesting no action. All right. We will move on to item number C. Consider employment of teachers and other professional staff. Mr. President, I move approval to uh, hire uh, teachers and other professional staff as uh, recommended in executive session. Second. Second. All right. Moved by Dr. Paradis, seconded by Dr. Reiniger. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Gabriel stole we, the show. We stand Sorry. adjourned. I, I